Should not a people seek unto their God for the living, to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Let's pray this morning. Father in heaven, God of Israel, we thank you so much, dear Lord, for this time of worshiping and fellowshipping, Lord. Father, during this time of the season, we can remember, God, your greatest gift to the world, that you gave your only begotten Son to die on the cross for the sins of all mankind. And I'm so grateful, Lord, that over 26 years ago, I received that free gift. And I'm so grateful, dear Lord, that during this time of the year that we can proclaim to the world, that we can tell it on mountains, that indeed a Savior is born, who was crucified, risen, and one day coming back with power and great glory. <clears throat> Father, help us to take advantage of this time of the year to share that same gift with those around us who are lost, and in darkness. Father, we ask and pray now, Lord, that you will be done. And if there's someone here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray that today, Lord, they would receive that free gift of eternal life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. The Jewish prophet Isaiah talks about those who would seek answers other than from the Word of God itself. He's talking about those who would seek answers from pagan sources other than the Word of God itself. And folks, you got to admit that in this day and age that we are living in today, people get so distressed, even during this time of the year, especially during this time of the year. They get so stressed out that they often turn to pagan practices for answers other than going to the Word of God itself. And, by, and Isaiah says that in the last days they will seek familiar spirits, which by the way is a fancy word of saying witchcraft, and that they would seek soothsayers, which is another word for so-called mediums and so-called psychics. And by the way, they're very popular in this day and age today. There are even reality shows out there for so-called psychics who think that they can predict your future. I'd like to sit down with one and say, well, let me predict your future. Amen. I don't need a crystal ball to do it, brother. Amen. The Bible says if you're not born again, if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, one day you'll go to hell Amen. for the rest of eternity. Amen? Amen? You don't need a crystal ball for that. I just got that from the Word of God. Amen? But these so-called mediums and psychics say they're very popular. They've got so many reality TV shows about that stuff today, which by the way, is a bunch of trash. They, the Bible says they turn to people who peep and mutter, which is another word of saying they whisper and they chirp. And, and folks, they turn to these so-called soothsayers and these so-called mediums and witchcraft other than to God himself. Right. Why is it that God is always the last resort to go to? When we're going through trials and tribulations and distress, we'll try everything the world has out there, and when they all fail, well, I, I guess I'll give you a try, God. God always seems to be the last resort. And folks, you've got to admit, sometimes we can become our own worst enemies. Right. They go to these people who peep and mutter or whisper and chirp. And the Jewish prophet Isaiah is warning the people of his day not to turn to such people, just as we want people today not to turn to such people. You know, the Bible talks about necromancy, those who claim they can talk to the dead. That's another popular trend in American society today. There are those who are distressed over the loss of a loved one, that they'll seek so-called necromancers. And by the way, when you read the book of Leviticus, necromancy is a no-no. God says, don't do it, amen? It's a pagan occult practice. Many of you have heard of the name Jonathan Edwards. This guy makes big money 
traveling all across the United States claiming that he can put surviving loved ones in contact with their deceased loved ones. And it's people like Jonathan Edwards that Isaiah is wanting to stay away from. Very popular in this day and age today. The Bible wants to stay away from such people. The Bible says, uh, do not consult the dead on behalf of the living. Amen. If you want to know what's going to happen in the future, all you got to do is go to the word of God. You don't need to go to Brother Rizal. You don't need to go to the preacher. Just go to the word of God. Thank God we have a preacher who preaches from the word of God. Amen. But if you want to know what's going to happen in the future, all you've got to do is read God's word. You don't need to go to those nutcases. Amen? Amen? If you want to know such things, we are to seek God himself. We need to consult the word of God if we want to know what's going to happen in the future. This was brought to my attention. Brother, you probably saw this on Facebook. Somebody sent me a video of a Florida council meeting. And uh, they were going to open up the meeting in prayer. One guy gets up, and as he approached the podium, as I watched the video, the mayor and other council members began to walk out. They were anticipating something. And when you watch the video, you will know why they walked out of this Florida city council meeting. During the council meeting, an, an atheist by the name of Preston Smith, who by the way is an elected city official, stood up and opened the session in prayer. Now before he began, like I said, the majority of the people walked out, including the mayor. He opened up his so-called prayer, so-called prayer by saying this, Mother Earth, we thank thee for your guidance and your direction. We give glory to Allah and Satan, and we thank them for giving us wisdom and direction. We also thank the God Zeus for showing us the path. And as he continued this heretical prayer, he blasphemed the name of Jesus Christ. As he continued in his wicked prayer, in his pagan prayer, he said, we can create a better community without religious division. He continued to blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, we don't need this hell, fire, and brimstone judgment preaching. No wonder they all walked out. But after he was done with his so-called prayer, then they went to salute the American flag and the rest of them, including the mayor, walked in. What am I telling you this morning? America is becoming increasingly pagan with more hostility toward biblical, fundamental, orthodox Christianity. Now I'm here to tell you this morning, folks, the Bible, and the Bible alone is the only divine, accurate book that contains prophecy, amen? There is no prophecy in the Quran. In that book they use down over there, there's, no, there's not one prophecy in that book. There's no prophecy in the Quran. There's no prophecy in the Book of Mormon. There's no prophecy in the Hindu Virtus. There's no prophecy in, other, in any other religious text around the world other than the Word of God. Right. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22, it's prophecy. And you can take that to the bank, amen? There is no other prophecies outside the Word of God. Do you know the Bible, ladies and gentlemen? The Bible alone is one-fourth prophecy. The Bible alone consists of 33% of prophecy in the Word of God. If you were to take the book of Daniel and go to Daniel chapter number 1, and then go to Matthew all the way to Revelation chapter 22. If you work between your thumb and your index finger, take the book of Daniel, and from Matthew to Revelation, have all that between your thumb and your index finger. You want to know something? You are holding between your thumb and your index finger 33% of prophecy. 
you are roughly holding 400 of the 1189 chapters that are in the Word of God. Folks, that's a lot of prophecy. And if prophecy is that important to, to God, it should be just as important to you and I. Right. And in this day and age today, churches want nothing to do with the study of eschatology, meaning the doctrine of last things. They don't want to touch Bible prophecy with a 10-foot pole. They don't want to preach Bible prophecy. I'll have people come up to me after services and say, August, Bible prophecy scares me. I'm terrified of it. I'll read all the books of the Bible, but I'll never read the book of Daniel, and I'll never read the book of Revelation. Prophecy terrifies me. What do you think about that? And I'll just look right at them and say, and just tell them, you just need to get saved. Just get saved. Because if you're not saved, I'm here to tell you this morning, one day Bible prophecy will be your holy terror. But if you're born again and you know Jesus Christ is your personal savior, one day Bible prophecy will be your blessed hope. The blessed hope of Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Because nowhere in my Bible does it tell me to look for the Antichrist. But I can show you scores of verses of the New Testament where the Bible tells us to look for who? Jesus Christ. Because he is the promise of our blessed hope. That's Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Paul says look in for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God. And our Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no other prophecy other than the Word of God itself. Seeking answers from other so-called sacred books leads to nothing but paganism that is plaguing America and the world today. False religions are all over the United States. And one of them is just two doors down. Involved in an intolerant religion that hates Jews and hates Christianity. Religions are, today are plagued by paganism and occult worship. And folks, 1,500 years ago, that is exactly what the founder of Islam did when he established a brand new religion that is growing like wildfire today. Mohammed in the seventh century said, I am a direct descendant of Ishmael. He went to a place called Mecca, located today in Saudi Arabia. And in pre-Islamic times, in Mecca, they, and, and still there today, by the way, is this large black object. And before Mohammed came on the scene, in pre-Islamic times, they took 360 pagan idols and put them in this black object known as the Kaaba. And every year, Muslims make a pilgrimage to Mecca known as the Hajj pilgrimage. And they march around that black object. By the way, they say that black object represents Satan. But what they don't know is that Satan runs that show over there. They'll march around, they'll march around, working themselves into a frenzy. They'll trample over each other. People get killed at those Hajj pilgrimages. And some of them would walk around with whips in their hands, with pieces of glass and bone. And as they, you can see this on, on a YouTube video, watch it for yourself. They walk around that Hajj festival, and you can see some of them with their eyes turning behind in the back of their heads. They're walking around, they're whipping themselves like this, and they're walking around that black object, blood streaming down their bodies. That's not of God. That's Satan running the show over there. Right. They put, in pre-Islamic times, 360 pagan idols in that black object known as the Kaaba. Muhammad comes on the scene to stop this new religion that they call today Islam. He walks into that black object, Brother Miller, and he says, out of all of these 360 idols, I choose one of those idols to become the god of my religion. And out of those 360 idols, he chooses one idol by the name of Allah. And by the way, folks, Allah is not the god of the Bible. Right. Amen? Amen. 
Allah is nothing more.